Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara and I am back today with another project pan update video. Now I was away for a few weeks. I had predicted that that would happen so hopefully you were not taken aback by my absence but we are back, we are recording content and we are here for the most popular series on my channel which is of course project pan updates. Earlier this year, maybe about three months ago, I made the decision to make these videos more frequently. I used to do every two months and now I'm trying to do every month. It was a little bit longer than a month wait this time because of my few week absence, but we're back, baby. Now I will say my last Project Pan update, I will link that here. I had, I think four empties, which is not that unusual for me, but that kind of thing kind of only happens once a year. And after my four empty update, the next update after that tends to be not quite as exciting and uh, that is no different today. I don't have any empties today but I do have a lot of progress on some of the items that I will be discussing today. So next update I will for sure have two empties and possibly three. So you know, the next update is going to be good and this one is good just because of the progress that has been made in the interim, although no empties, which to some people is the most exciting part. But enough blabbering on, let's talk about the products and let me show you the usage that I've had over the past four to six weeks. I'll try to do the same order broadly as I did last time. And last time I started with this MAC highlight, which I have had to depot into this KBD container. Unfortunately, I have probably only used this a handful or maybe five times since the last update just because of what's going on in my life. Now, happily, this is the only product in this project pan where I have had less use than usual. All these other ones I have had way more use than usual because I have been doing my makeup like five to seven days a week for the past three-ish weeks, I would say, which is higher than usual. And so a lot of great use, but just not on this because I was tending towards a much faster makeup style and more cream products. This is a powder highlight and it's also very obvious. And I was trying to do a bit more of a natural makeup look on the daily. And uh, this MAC highlight, it's not natural at all. It's very bold. I love it, but like for the right type of look. So I was just never reaching for this. I was never doing a double highlight day when I put like one cream highlight and then one powder. So this did not get very much use at all. <laughs> so I won't show you any difference because there probably wasn't any difference, but for next time, I will get back into using this over the next month or so. And hopefully next time there will be some changes, but I will show you on that note, the other highlight that has been in my project pan, which has been this merit highlight. And this is the one that I have gotten a ton of use out of because I didn't get very much use out of this. This was what I was using on the daily. Literally, I have probably used this every single day for the past three weeks. So you and me are gonna find out right now how much is left. That's it. Oh, that is all that is left in this highlight. I love it. This is just the best cream highlight. Like, I don't know if I will ever find a product that tops this. And so one day I might end up repurchasing this, but for now I'll just say that I have loved using it and no, it's, it still doesn't have a scent happily, but I am conscious that I need to finish this up sooner rather than later. So probably not next time, but I think by the end of the year, this product will be done. So I'm keeping this in the project pan and you know, you'll be seeing here all the progress that I've made on it over the past few months. Okay. Next up is the only measured item in my project pan. We've got this little eyeliner, which is from wet and wild. And I, this is probably the most consistent product in my project pan series. Like it has been in the longest and you can see that. <laughs> with this battered piece of paper, which shows all of the markings I've done as I have slowly over the years used up this eyeliner. So let's do another check right now. Let's see how much progress we made. Ooh, that's pretty good actually. Let me mark it off here. I will show you that most recent marking. I mean, as you can see, it's only a little bit at a time, but honestly, if there's any change at all, 
then I am happy. And I have used this a fair amount because lately, as I've said, I have been doing a lot of makeup, but not a lot of like glam makeup. And so when I'm trying to go a little more understated, I usually go with a brown or colorful eyeliner, like a burgundy or something. And so I have been using this and honestly it could even use a sharpen. So it would be even lower than that, but yeah, as you can see, this has still got about a year's worth out of it. At this point, I'm thinking like, should I buy another brown eyeliner so that I have one that I actually love? Or should I just stick it out through this? Because like, it gets the job done, but I don't love it. When you've stuck with something for this long, you just want to kind of see it through. So that's what I'm doing. That's, uh, that's how we're looking. We've used at least half of it up, so happy about that. Okay, the next one, actually this is another measurable product, but not measurable in the sense of like height of it. This is the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation. And I actually have come around to this a little bit. I have found that if I use it in the exact right way, there is a method, then it looks lovely on the face. However, if I use a little bit too much or if my skin is not having a good day or if I blend it badly or if I use it with anything except for a beauty blender, it looks bad. It looks real bad. So I just have to be very particular <laughs> with how I use this and I have to use a very, very small amount. As long as I do all of that, then it looks good. But there's a very small margin of error. That being said, I have used this a lot over the past month or so. This was sort of my like daily go-to product. I would just use a very, very little bit and then I would be happy with it. So let's, let's measure it. Let's see how much is left. I gotta go get the scale. And just for reference, in June, there was 68 grams when I measured this without the cap. In end of July, August, there was 62. So 68, 62, let's see what we're at now. What? Yeah, I sprayed it. I'm, I've already clicked record. Okay, so tear it. Okay, it's at zero. What are we at now? I've taken the cap off. 56, so we have used up six grams worth. This container weighs eight grams. So according to my calculations, there's 48 grams left. That's a lot, but at least we're making progress. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I expected. It is also quite a light shade. Actually, why don't I just spray some for you right now? And so this actually wasn't great for me during the summer. I would have to use quite a bit of bronzer to make it fit my complexion better. So this actually would be better in the winter. That being said, I made it work, but you can see it's just, it's a little, it's a little too light. And this is in 101, which might be the lightest shade. So anyways, I would not recommend purchasing this. It's not a love, it's not a favorite, but because I do have it, I am using it up. Okay, moving on to brow gels. Now, this was the product that I thought would be finished this month. Everything else I was like, no, it's gonna take a bit longer, but the brow gel, I will be done. However, <laughs> it's not that I wasn't using this. There's actually two brow gels in this month. We've got the Merit Brow Gel and the Clinique Mascara, which I have turned into a brow gel. So I, like to revive these products with contact solution because there's still more product in them, but they sort of get dried out. However, I was not able to find my contact solution this month. I definitely have it somewhere. I just knew that I have to like reorganize under the bathroom sink, it's in there somewhere. And that was just a task that was too large, was too daunting, I did not have time for it. So I was like, you know what? Late September, I will be able to do that. So once I find the contact solution, I will revive these one more time. I will use them more and then it will be time to say goodbye to both of them. So next time, next update, these are leaving my collection. But for now, I think I can get one more month's use out of them as long as I put some contact solution into them. So not this time, but definitely next time for both of them. That's why I say there will be two empties next time because at least those two will be done. But I will say like, I still really enjoy both of them. I go for the Merit one if I need more of a natural look. And if I really want to fluff up my brow hairs like I have done today, this one is if I have a bit of a darker makeup look and I don't care as much about having fluffy brows. And fluffy brows to me suits more the natural makeup look, whereas a dark, a bit more straight brow suits a 
heavier, more dramatic makeup look. So slightly different purposes there, but I do still enjoy both of them. Moving on, I have one product that I'm not decluttering, but I'm removing it from the project pan, and it is this one. It is the NYX Glitter Primer. The story with this is, last update, I I was inspired. I was like, you know what? I need to get more use out of this. I'm just gonna try to use it however I can because that's always what I say, right? Like try to use up your products in different ways than they were intended for and you might end up loving them. Like for example, I use lipstick as blush all the time. So I thought, okay, I rarely wear sparkly eyeshadow. So maybe I should just try to wear this like with matte eyeshadow, see how that goes. <laughs> There's a reason this is intended for a sparkly eyeshadow. Like it just doesn't work well with matte eyeshadow. And I just need to accept that I struggled to use this, frankly. I am going to keep it in my makeup bag so that when I do wear sparkly eyeshadow on those occasions, I reach for this. I make sure that I am using this in addition to my regular eyeshadow primer, but I'm just not, I'm not gonna be able to wear glitter eyeshadow primer all the time. And I'm also not going to wear glitter eyeshadow, period, <laughs> all the time. I did actually get in the habit of using this eyeshadow every day for the past few weeks. Like my go-to during the really busy time was this Revlon Color Stay eyeshadow in 7.30 and a like burgundy liner. That was my go-to look because it was so fast. Like, you know, if you put on eyeshadow, it takes a while, but with this, I would just take a little bit, smear it on, smear it on, and then I was good to go. And it was like, I had my eyeshadow on for the day. And this stuff is so heavy duty. It does not budge for at least 12 hours. Like by the time I went to bed, since my days were so long, it would have smudged obviously, but it lasts a good 10 to 12 hours before that happens. And it's pretty, I like it. It's, it's sort of like a rose gold champagne-y color and it's just easy. It's just easy to do like a one and done eyeshadow. And with this, you don't need a base underneath because this is intended to be the base. Like I could use this as a base under other glitter or shimmer eyeshadows. This is what I ended up using instead of this. So I'm keeping this in my makeup bag, but I'm just acknowledging that I'm not going to be able to get a ton of use out of it. And I'm just gonna try to use it when I can. So you will not see this in next month's project pan update, unfortunately. Okay, the next one is another one that I did not really succeed at getting a lot of use out of. This is the Maybelline The Rocket Volume Express. And I think that I had used this in the previous video and you can really tell like my eyelashes do not look good. They are, they are drooping, they are not up and alive, you know? And it's because of this mascara. It's just not very good. I just wanna get to the point where there is so little product left that I can use this as a brow gel because I think that this will thrive as a brow gel. I really like the wand and I feel like it's very useful for combing through small hairs, but it just doesn't keep a curl. Like it's not waterproof. And so your eyelashes lose their curl immediately. I can use it if I'm okay with that happening, but it's just not my preference, you know? If I'm seeing people, like I want my eyelashes to look good. So I did really struggle to use this. I used it a handful of times, but not that many. I'm gonna keep it in my makeup bag once again to try to get more use out of it. But after next month, I am going to rotate it out and bring a different mascara into my makeup bag because, you know, I have other mascaras I like better. So I don't wanna punish myself by using exclusively mascaras that I don't enjoy. I can handle doing that with other types of products, you know, like with lippies, I can use ones that I don't love with foundations, but it's just harder for me with mascaras because mascara just like changes your whole look. You know, if your lips don't look great, you know, it, it's kind of okay, but if your mascara doesn't look good, then your eyes don't look good. So that to me is the most important part. Anyways, that was enough of a rant about this. <laughs> Waterproof mascara for life. Ooh, the next one is kind of a rediscovery. This is one that I found I really have enjoyed the past month and I didn't think I was going to. This is the Personnel Bronzer. This is 25 grams. It is massive. Just for comparison, let's take, does this say the number of grams? Yeah, this Revlon 
potted thing is 5.2 grams. This is 25. This is five times the size of this. And I don't know that I will ever be able to fully use it up, but if I did, it would take years and years and years. Luckily, I do enjoy it. I don't think it's the perfect shade for me, but I actually don't have any other powder bronzers. This is my only powder bronzer. So until I find something better, I'm going to keep using this because it's getting the job done. And I'm just happy that I'm finally giving it some time of day because I have ignored this in my collection for far too long. I think it'll take a long time before you can't see the like imprint anymore because I've already been using it like pretty much every day for the past month and a half and you can still see the imprint but I'm gonna keep working on this and because I'm enjoying it I'm gonna keep it in the project pan. I also feel like I just I should have a bronzer in my project pan otherwise I don't I don't use bronzer. I'm still I still struggle to use bronzer on the daily. Okay, I am actually adding one new product into the project pan this month because I removed the glitter primer, but we have one more update before I tell you what that is. So last time I actually added in a skincare product, which I hadn't done for some time. When I started project panning, I used to always have one skincare product and then the rest makeup. I don't have as many skincare products that I am trying to like work out of my collection that I need to incentivize myself to use, you know, because all of my skincare products are newer. And so I purchased them myself and I'm not like, oh, this is going to expire. You know what I mean? For the most part. Whereas with makeup, a lot of these products is um, me being like, hmm, I have neglected these for too long. I've had them for too many years and we need to move them out. But this is the Ordinary Multipeptide Eye Serum. I believe I got it at the beginning of 2024 and hopefully you'll be able to see how much progress I've made, but we are close to the bottom. We are in that bottom fifth, I would say. So I will compare it to last month's update, but yeah, we we could have this done by the end of the year. I don't think it will be done by next update, but within the next three months for sure. I am kind of neutral on this. I have not noticed any changes to my under eye area, but it's not offensive to me for the most part. I do find sometimes that if I use it immediately after washing my face, then it does kind of sting this area. If I let my face dry a little bit and then use it, it's fine. But my skin has been a lot more sensitive lately, so I don't know what's going on with that. This is not something I would repurchase, but I'm going to use it up while I have it because it's, it's fine. It's cute. It adds an extra step to my skincare. It makes me feel, you know, kind of pampered. But yeah, has anyone noticed a difference? Do you have like before and after pictures as proof that this does something? Because I just don't believe that it does, at least not on myself. And the final product that I have in this month's project pan that I am rolling into the project is this lipstick slash blush. This is probably actually better suited for my lipstick project pan, but I just don't know when I will be doing that update, to be honest. Let me, let me check my schedule real quick. Yeah, my last lipstick project pan update was not even a month ago, so I think we need to give it some more time, and I honestly think that this will be done by the time I film my next lipstick project pan update. But this was the Kiko lipstick that I had been working on for a long time. It's red, obviously, and I just recently depotted it. I had finished the lipstick a long time ago, but I was just putting off depotting it. And this is what we got left. I fear you can still hear that, but I'm going to talk through it anyways. So this looks like only a little bit of product left. This is not one of those products where there was like a ton remaining inside to scoop out, but because it's such a vibrant, because it's such a vibrant red, it's still going to take a long time to use up, especially as a blush. Now this is my preferred red blush. I've got another red lipstick that I have been using as a blush and it's just not great. This on the other hand, very good as a blush, very similar to the Glossier Cloud Paint in Spark, I believe it's called. And it's also great as a lip product. So I love this on the lips. I love this on the cheeks. I'm going to be missing it when it's gone. But that being said, I still do 
need to use it up. I think I could finish this within a month. If I use this as a blush like three days a week, that's, that's all it'll take. So that is the final product that I am throwing into this project pan update. So these are the three that I think will be finished for next update. These two for sure, this one, as long as I use it frequently, it'll be done. This is the next most likely thing to be finished, but honestly, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like there's gonna be a lot more inside there. So there's a possibility that this will take quite a bit longer. I, I just think by the end of the year is probably safest to say. And then I will also be rotating this mascara out of the project for next time. And yeah, I think that is it. Those are all the products in this month's project pan update. What did you think? Did I make less progress than you expected? More progress? That's gonna be it for today, but let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. And I think some of you will be excited about this one because it's actually a reread myself and it was inspired by um, pop culture currently. So let me just pull it out. This is Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. So this came out in 2005 and it was a huge thing when I was in middle school. I think it was like grade seven, eight when this was popular, which was 2007, 2008. And I loved it at the time. I think I reread it at least once when I was in high school. And then I haven't, I mean, I own the whole series, but I have not picked it up since then. And I, I have been curious about it for a while. I like to reread the series that I loved when I was younger just to see sort of how they compare. Like I've obviously done this with Harry Potter because that does hold up to adults. Like it's, it's written in a not very YA type of way. Although, you know, don't buy new copies of Harry Potter. And then Hunger Games also really holds up. That is much more YA, but it's still very mature, very adult themes. I want to reread the Twilight series. I think that will be a hoot. And then also the Ugly series because I loved it so much when I was younger. And honestly, this is like a bit of column A, a bit of column B. Like it's definitely very YA. It doesn't hold up in the same way that Hunger Games does, but it still grapples with some in, like heavy themes. And it does still feel ahead of its time. And I'm still entertained as I'm reading this. Like I'm having a really good time and it's not as much of a page turner as I remember it being, but I'm still invested in the story and I'm not bored at all. So the reason I'm reading this now is because they made a movie of this book. And by all accounts, the, the movie is terrible. Like it's it's got a terrible score on Rotten Tomatoes. Even the trailer looks really bad. Like. It just seems like they they weren't even trying to make a good movie. Like every decision is just bad. Like even looking at the poster, you're like, was this made in 2010? Like it looks so dated. Basically in this future world, everyone is considered an ugly, everyone is natural. And then when they turn 16, they are given this operation, which turns them into a pretty, where they basically make every person beautiful by this like you know universal biological standard supposedly and the idea is that well you know now like in in our world things are unequal because people are treated differently based on the way they look and so they're trying to like equalize that which on one level is like very interesting and kind of valid but on another it, it leaves open a whole a whole bunch of questions like uh, come on like there's no grappling with race at all at least as as far as i've gone into this there's not really any discussion of like the economic system so you know you can tell this is like at a very young ya crowd but anyways i'm enjoying reading this and i don't know if i'll read the full series but if you feel like rereading some ya this is not a bad place to go to like this I recently read Fourth Wing and Iron Flame and then also the first book in the Akatar, A Court of Rose and Thorns or whatever that series is called. Those are those are those are not good. Those are not good. This it's not great, but it's interesting. It's it's mostly well written and it's 
mostly a fun read. So anyways, yeah, let me know if you have read the book and if you have seen the movie because I am curious how those compare. And just one more thing, there's some ideas in the book that are so like futuristic and I would have believed that it was written in like 2020 because of the way that it treats the future in that like everything uses solar panels and like they don't cut down trees and they found a way to like adapt to their environment in a way that doesn't create global warming like that is what killed the previous civilization aka us in the books and it just makes me it like it hammers home that like we have known about global warming we've known about climate change and the harms of it for so long this book came out in 2005 and we're still grappling with these same issues and, and we have known how to solve them for decades now and we just haven't Anyways, I think that if it was written today, the focus would be more on that, but it does feel very much like a dystopia and it very much also feels like a precursor to books like The Hunger Games. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Anyways, I need to stop ranting about that. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next week. <laughs> Bye.